As a high school student studying calculus, I've always had this one question in my mind. Why the integral of a function gives us the area under the curve? Now, what I was being told in school is that if you go in and sum up small rectangles with small width that are infinitesimally small um, for any given function and add the areas of the rectangles up, you're going to get the area of the curve between given bounds. Now, that has never come across intuitive to me, and I'm pretty sure most of you also have this gap in your thinking that why, when I take the antiderivative of a function, why does it give me the area under the curve? If you have the same exact question, well, you're in the right spot. Today, we're going to be answering this question. Now, let's go ahead and start drawing our function on an xy plane. Say that we have a function any random function it's just a curve that goes like this and we'll call this f of x so our, we have our function f of x and this is zero and this is say x right over here as we can let's just draw the bounds so it's more visual and now let's suppose that we go h steps to the right of the function so i go h steps to the right and i end up in a point which we'll call x plus h we go h steps from x to the right and this point will be x plus h and so let's go ahead and draw a line like this like so all right now let's go ahead and try to compute the area of this rectangular shape right over here it's not exactly rectangular but it looks like uh, it looks like one it's similar to one so we're just going to call it a rectangular shape now let's go ahead and assign a variable that will calculate our area between given bounds so if i say a of x, we just define the function right over here, and we say that this function, it calculates the area. This function calculates the area of a graph uh, in any given x value. For instance, if you say a of x, it's going to calculate the area from 0 to x. If you say a of x plus h, it's going to calculate the area from 0 to x plus h. Um, now let's go ahead and do something like this. Um, let's go ahead and try to find an expression for the area right over here in terms of a of x. So how would I do this? I can see that if I take a of x plus h, which is the area of this, minus a of x, I'm going to get the area of this shaded region. So let's say that our area is going to be a of x plus h minus a of x. This is an expression for our area. Now let's go ahead and actually start to compute the area of this rectangular shape in another way. So this is one expression, but let's go ahead and try to compute it in another way. So this is simple geometry. What the area of a rectangle is simply the height multiplied by the base. So I would say that, okay, let's take the, here we can form two types of rectangles. One, which will have a height of right over here, which is f of x, as x is the point right over here, and x and f of x is going to be the output. So one height is f of x. The other height of the rectangle is this right over here, as you can see. And this will lead to, the this height is f of x plus h, because we add x plus h. And this is the new rectangle right over here. But for now, let's go ahead and calculate the area of this rectangle, the smaller rectangle. So the area of the smaller rectangle will be area, it's going to be um, h, because this width right over here is h, it's going to be h times f of x, because f of x is the height of the rectangle, f of x right over here. Now, the second area right over here is going to be, I mean, the second type of triangle that we can get here is the one with the height f of x plus h. The base is still the same. So we're going to label this area 1, and we're going to label this area 2. And the area 2 is going to be the base times f of x plus h. So now we have two types of areas. But now let's see, now let's try to go ahead and create an inequality from this. So we can visually see that, well, 
our original area, which is in the curve right over here, as you can see, our original area is smaller than area 2, but it's bigger than area 1, because this is area 1, and this is area 2, but this is the original area, right? This is the in actual area. So the actual area is, I repeat again, it is bigger than... Um, is bigger than area one, but it's smaller than area two. So let's go ahead and make an inequality right like like so. So I'd go ahead and write down um, h times f of x is less than or equal to a of x. Uh, I'm actually get down because it's kind of difficult to write it like this. So we see h of x is um, less than a of x plus h minus a of x and this area right over here is smaller than area 2 which is h times f of x plus h now what do we do here now this was the important part to get to this expression right over here now what i can do is i can go ahead and divide every single term by h so if I go ahead and divide every single term by h, I get something like this. I get f of x smaller or equal to a of x plus h minus a of x over h smaller or equal than h of f of, oops, sorry, we get rid of h here, f of x plus h. Right, correct. Now what we do here. We have this expression right over here, and it looks quite familiar to one of my favorite expressions, and that is uh, the definition of a derivative. If I go ahead and write down for each side limit as h approaches to zero, I get something like this. So if I go ahead and write limit as h approaches to zero uh, for this, and as well as for this, limit as h approaches to zero, and as well as for this limit as h approaches to zero, I can tell that this expression right over here, it is the definition of the derivative of this function. So this leads to, in the center, we're gonna get derivative, which is a prime of x. On the left-hand side, we're gonna get f of x because f of x here is not dependent on h, so it's still going to be f of x as limit as h approaches zero. So it's still going to be f of x right over here. And from here, it's still, now as h approaches the zero, as you can see, this will turn to zero. And now we will be left with f of x. I mean, it's moved so, so, the, so people can see. All right. Um, and this is going to be f of x. I want to just go ahead and write this in terms of um, dA over dx because a prime of x you can write in, in the derivative form which is dA over dx same definition but this is I believe it's more coherent it's more coherent and it's better f of x I just like to write it like this f of x no no don't do it don't do it don't. and it's f of x right over here and when something is less than or e greater than the same thing which is f of x and which is equal to that we can just say that da over dx is equal to f of x because this is basically being squeezed and it is the same thing so this expression yields to this expression let's go ahead and treat this bit as a fraction right if i treat this bit as a fraction i say that well da i move the x to the right f of x dx no, no. Cheeky. Cheeky, don't do it. <laughs> Say dA is equal to f of x dx. And now, uh, so right here, what we can do is, um, I'm just going to go ahead and take the integral from both sides. If I go ahead and integrate the both sides, I get a, which is area on the left hand side, and on the right hand side I get the integral of f of x dx. And what this suggests is that the integral of f of x dx 
is actually the area of the function. So here is a quick proof of why we, when we, whenever we take the integral of something, why we get the area under the curve. And I think that this is fascinating and I think all of you should know this. Um, you want to say anything to the mic? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, you heard that, guys. Subscribe.